Hey all y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carrie. This is where I talk about knitting, my tips, my tricks, my opinions, and my preferences. One thing I love about knitting is that there's always something new to learn. There are so many knitting tools, like notions, but also like knitting tools and techniques that are out there for us to discover. And the learning never ends. I just recently learned a new way to cast on for one by one ribbing. So I'm going to share that with you today. And as a bonus, I'm going to show you one of my favorite bind offs that is elastic and great for finishing cuffs, socks, gloves, you name it. So hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up and let's knit. Before we get started, just want to quickly mention that down in the description box is a list of materials that I've used in this video with affiliate links. If you click on an affiliate link and make a purchase, I may earn a small commission. My goal with this channel is to spread the joy of knitting and crafting and utilizing affiliate links helps support that effort. So if you choose to use an affiliate link, Thank you so much. I truly appreciate your support. So knitting so often we are working practical projects. They're meant to be worn, not just be seen on a wall. Although those are delightful things as well. But so often we are, we are knitting projects that are meant to be used and to be worn. And a lot of times this involves cuffs of sleeves, of socks, of gloves, brims of hats that you need ribbing to make them functional. One of the challenges for casting on and binding off with ribbing, however, is how do you have a cast on or a bind off that stretches enough with the ribbing so that we can actually get a hat on our head or get the glove down our arm, whatever it is. So this is one of the challenging things in knitting. Um, there are lots, lots of solutions to this challenge and I'm kind of just excited whenever I learn a new one. So the cast on I'm going to show you today is the Estonian cast on. This cast on is a variation of a long tail cast on. So if you know how to do a long tail cast on, you'll be able to do the Estonian cast on. And I have really, really fallen in love with this cast on. I learned how to do it for a fingerless glove project that I am working um, from the designer Liz Cork. It's gorgeous. I will leave a link to that pattern down in the description box if you are interested in it. Um, this is like one of my favorite patterns right now. I love this pattern so, so much. And I just bound off the first club of that project and I used my favorite elastic bind off for it. And when you see this elastic bind off, you're gonna be like, really, really, really? It's that simple? Yes, it's gonna be that simple. One thing though I will say right off the bat that this cast on and bind off I'm about to show you, these are not matching bind offs and cast offs, meaning that when you do them, they're not gonna look like each other necessarily. And that means that if you were wanting to have a project where the cast on and the bind off looked the same, so you wouldn't know what the cast on and bind off edge, these are not matching cast on and bind off in that way. But if you're working something like a glove where you need an elastic bind off and cast off, both of these will work together very nicely. Like they will, they, they look close enough alike. The, functional, the functionality though of these cast ons and bind offs are really the most important aspect of it. As always, I hope that you will watch the entire video, but I do know that life is happening. So if you wanna be able to skip around to any part of the video, I will have links down in the description box. This bind off, as I said, is a variation of a long tail cast on. So uh, if you want any tips or information, general information about the long tail cast on, how to estimate a length of tail, anything like that, I will have some video links down in the description box so you can explore those topics further, but I'm going to presume that you're well versed in the long tail cast on, you understand the basics of it, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> I'm using a twist start to begin the Estonian cast on. If you'd like, you can absolutely use just a slip knot that is dealer's choice. So here I am in the slingshot position and I have strands one, two, three, and four. Like I said, the Estonian cast on 
is a variation of the long tail cast on. So it starts off exactly the same. You bring the needle to the left side of strand one, you bring the needle up underneath strand one, so the needle is between one and two. You go over and you grab strand three with your needle, bring that back through the loop, and tighten. And that is how you do your typical stitch. Here's where the variation comes in for the Estonian cast on. This time, right, I'm in the sling, I'm at the beginning of the slingshot position, and I have that triangle formed, right? I'm gonna take my thumb though, and I'm going to take my thumb and I'm gonna move it to the right side of the yarn like this, and then bring my needle down. And I just wanna pause here for a moment to compare what the loop coming off the thumb looks like on the normal long tail cast on versus this variation. On the left, notice that strand two crosses over strand one, but on the right with the variation, that loop coming off the thumb is open. Okay. Now here's strand one on the outside of my thumb, strand two, strand three. Strand four is back there, but strand four doesn't really matter. I'm gonna take my needle, I'm gonna bring it down in between strands one and two, up underneath strand two, like this. I'm gonna reach over and grab strand three, and I'm gonna bring strand three up through that loop, take my thumb out, and tighten. And this is what it looks like now. It looks like this stitch here, right? This is the first stitch that we cast it on. It looks like this stitch on the left and this stitch on the right are coming out of this same strand right here. So that's what it looks like when it's done. Now I'm ready to do my next cast on stitch and it's just a normal long tail cast on stitch like you would normally do. And then I'm gonna do my second stitch of the pattern and again I'm gonna bring my thumb to the right side of the strand one down, bring my needle down between strands one and two, up underneath strand two, grab strand three, bring that up through the loop and tighten. So this Estonian cast on is really a two stitch pattern. You're casting on your first stitch as you would a normal long tail cast on. And then the second stitch, you do the variation where you bring your thumb to the right side of the strand and then you go down, grab underneath strand two, grab strand three and through like that. Now, one thing that's really cool about this is after you do the variation and you tighten down, you're automatically gonna be set up to do your normal long tail cast on. It's only when you're doing the variation that you have to remember to move your thumb to the other side of the yarn and do the, your cast on. So once you get the rhythm of this, it goes by pretty quickly, which is nice. This cast on is just really lovely. Um, if you were to do just some other kind of stitch pattern other than one by one ribbing, you would have a very nice decorative edge here. But I'm going to knit a few rows of one by one ribbing and then you're gonna be able to see how this type of cast on just creates a very nice elastic cast on for one by one ribbing. Can I say one by one ribbing any more times? <laughs> I got a little bit of ribbing here and you can start to see what this looks like. Um, this looks a little sloppy right now because I'm actually using a needle size that's like one needle size too big for this yarn, but that's okay. Um, but you can see here's my one by one ribbing and look how elastic that cast on is. Like this cast on can stretch forever. But notice it moves right back. And that's exactly what you want when you're casting on one by one ribbing, right? Remember when we cast on a stitch, it looked like the two stitches were coming out of the same loop of yarn, but after you finish your one by one ribbing, it doesn't look that way. You have the one loop is here on the front, the other loop is kind of here hanging out underneath the fabric, and you have this beautiful elasticity. At the same time, because this cast on has these loops of thread down at the bottom, and it is a variation of long tail cast on, this is still a sturdy 
cast on. Like this will hold up. If this were the cuff of a sock or a sleeve or gloves, you know, hard wearing items that get used, this cast on edge is going to hold up very well for you. So I think this is just a really lovely, lovely cast on edge. Um, I still love my German double stitch. I mean, German twist cast on. Still love it. So I feel like I'm going to be hard pressed moving forward to decide, like, do I want to use German double stitch? Still mean German twist cast on. Or do I want to use the Estonian cast on? I think what's come down to probably for me is that if I'm casting on for one by one ribbing, I think I'd probably go with the Estonian cast on, depending on my mood. But if I were choosing between cast ons for ribbing, that's like two by two, three by three, four by two, anything like that, I'd probably go with the German twist cast on. Okay, so this bind off I'm gonna show you for one by one ribbing, this is a very elastic bind off, especially if you do the bind off in pattern, which is how I'm going to show you how to do this. And when you see it, you're gonna be like, or at least I was when I first saw it, like, does it really make that big of a difference? But then I did it and it was like, oh yeah, it really does make the bind off more elastic. This is great. So let's take a look at it. Uh, the suspended bind off starts off like a normal chain bind off. So I'm gonna just knit my first stitch. And that, like I said, I'm doing this in pattern. So I'm going to bring my needle around to the front so that I can purl my second stitch since that's a purl stitch. Here's where the variation comes in. I've worked this, I'm going to leave this stitch that I just worked into onto the needle. I'm gonna bring my yarn to the back of the work, okay? I'm gonna leave this stitch here on the needle and then I'm gonna just take my left needle, put it into that stitch right here that's on the right, and I'm gonna bring that over the stitch, all right? So I'm passing that stitch over and then I'm going to pull the stitch that was on my left needle off. All right, that's it. That's the variation. Now here is a knit stitch. So I'm going to work into this stitch like a knit stitch. But again, this stitch I just worked into, I'm going to leave on the needle as I go into the stitch on the right to pass it over my new stitch like this. And I'm gonna pull out my left needle and then I'm gonna drop that stitch that I worked into. This is a purl stitch. I'm gonna bring my yarn to the front. I'm gonna work my purl stitch. Bring, I'm gonna bring the yarn to the front so that it's easier for me to pass this stitch over this one. But again, I'm gonna leave this stitch that I just worked into on the needle. I'm gonna take, this is stitch one, stitch two. I'm gonna take my left needle, bring it into stitch one, pass that over stitch two, and then drop the stitch that's been hanging out on my left needle. And then I can knit this. Whoops, see I made a mistake. I let this stitch drop, not a big deal. Not a big deal if I let this stitch drop. All I have to do is take my needle and bring it in back into that stitch and bring it back up on the needle. That's a very common mistake that I make with the suspended bind off is I let this stitch right here drop off the needle. But if I do, I just pick it back up and bring it on the needle and then pass that stitch over, then I let it drop. So it's, it's very simple, straightforward bind off, which is one of the reasons I like it. It's not like a lot of extra crazy maneuvers. It's very much in line with how you would do a standard bind off with just a little variation. And I'm at the end. There we go. Just cut this. Pull that out. And I've bound off. And look how nice that bind off is. That got a little loopy. There's tricks to fixing that, but there is nice elasticity here at the top. If you know how to do a chain bind off, you can absolutely do 
the suspended bind off. And it's just a small variation that creates a big, big difference in elasticity. And I love that. I love when just a small change can have a big difference. What do you think? What are your favorite cast-ons and bind-offs for an elastic edge? Is this an area of which you have struggled? Or do you have a tip or trick to share with everyone? Because even though I like to think I know everything, I don't know everything. I learned a lot from you guys. So I would love to hear your thoughts on these sorts of bind-offs and cast-offs. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your knitting friends liking videos, sharing videos, commenting on videos, lets YouTube know that this is a space worth checking out and is a really helpful way of supporting what I do here. Also, if you have not already, please hit subscribe and the notification bell. Hitting subscribe and the notification bell will let you know whenever I upload a new video or start a live stream. I do live streams every Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific 2 p.m. Eastern. If you'd like to follow me on social media, you can find all of that down in the description box below. I hope that you have a wonderful day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this. And as always, happy health and happy knitting. Bye!